This week on NSFW, we are joined by actor and friend of the show, Matt Parkman from Heroes, Greg Grunberg. We walk the failed trail composed of failed tales. And I pitched to Greg a few live reads for his website, talkaboutit.org. It's all this week on NSFW. You've got... Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 21 for April 21st, 2010. New show fails weekly. This episode of NSFW brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. Greg Grunny Grunberg. Yeah! <laughs> Before we even introduce my calls, because obviously we can't bury the lead, I am right here in the humble home of none other than Greg Grunberg. How yes. are you doing, Greg? Oh, you can make, couldn't be better. Having you guys in my house, I'm taking lampshades off to get light. <laughs> this is a high budget production, man. As always, joined by my inimitable co host, it's none other on our East Coast affiliate, Mr. Justin Robert Youngification. Yes. What is going on, jury? Ah, oh, I'm so excited. I'm actually, uh, this is the kind of the, the really the, the pregame. We're doing the show, but really to me, the main event is tomorrow. I'm flying out to LA and we're all going to hang out and go to a Kings game. So really this is all way, that's, extended that's pregame until I get to see playoff hockey live. That's always a good thing to start off your show saying, by the way, everything for the next hour is a bunch of pre-show BS. You're not even be able to see yeah. the real I'm, events. I'm mailing it in until I can get out to LA and hang out with you guys live. So Man, there, there we is go. so much to talk about. Like, we actually have a theme for this episode. This episode, we are going to do a long and leisurely walk down a little thing we like to call the fail trail. But before we even get to that, I feel like there's so many questions. This is like the first episode of Lost. It's like, they're all like, well, Actually, it's more like, in more ways than one. This is like the first yes, episode. Yes, it is. <laughs> let, me, let me take the wheel. <laughs> yeah. But it's like people starting off the show and they got all these questions. They're like, wait, last time Grunny called in and now Brian's at his house. Did Brian teleport to some kind of alternate universe? What happened? How is he here? And Look, I was just yes. tired of Brian in my bushes. And I was like, dude, come on in, dude. What are you doing? It's cold out there. I was. I was just stalking. See, I'll tell you what. You sent out one saucer of milk, Grunberg, and this is what happens. He just keeps exactly. coming back. They he both stop coming back. So what's yeah. funny is this, like, this is all new territory for me, because I guess I don't know what we can and can't talk about. I guess uh, we, we can say I'm obviously here in Southern California. Yes, uh, and uh, Brian and I, we have a bromance going. That's and right. as the result of that bromance, there will be something very, very special that all of that we will be able to share with the world soon. That's right. I saw, I saw immediately in Brian Brushwood the potential for... Um, um, Let's just let's just talk about sheer uh, uh, um, political and, office. We can announce right now that Brian is running for president. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Finally, it's out. Oh yeah. man, That's I, I was just trying to choose my words very carefully. <laughs> anyway, we're working together on something, uh, and uh, it's going to be very, very. Cool. Yeah. By the way, anyone following my Twitter stream uh, probably noticed some out of the ordinary tweets yesterday, and 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 with Greg as well, for sure. We had a great day. We went around. Uh, we can talk about that. I was about to say, yeah. That's uh, specifically. I, mean, yeah. I don't know what we can and can't talk about. Like there are things we talked about in person about some of the people's houses. I don't know <laughs> how much of that would be. Yeah, I don't about. know. Well, you know, now you're in the inner sanctum. I know. Right? We're in the inner circle. You can't, like, stand on the outside of the bubble and go, look at these idiots! Look at these morons! You're in there now with us, my friend. I, I, wait, I, wait, which, by the uh, way, that's the best way to keep a secret, is to tease it before you don't say anything. The best thing true. to do is just, that's hey, by true. the way, you can't believe what I can't tell you about blank, blank, blank's house. That's right, that's, that's right, that's right. That's well, I'll tell you, uh, first of all, yesterday we went around and you were kind enough to arrange some opportunities to perform for several celebrities, some of them legendary, like literally 
uh, like, uh, I, I can't feel, help but feel like I'm that much closer to knocking on death's door since I've scratched off so many more items off my great list of to-dos. You know what, I actually, it's funny because I've, I've actually told this story on talk shows and stuff. When I was the driver for Joel Silver, which I was, Joel Silver, famous uh, movie producer. No uh, kidding. Yeah, from yeah, uh, Matrix course. and Die Hard and all that. Anyway, I drove Joel for a year, and, and then I became his assistant for a little, bit, a little while, and then I left. But um, I learned a tremendous amount. One of the things I learned is that, you know, <laughs> celebrities, it's just a title. They're all, you know, they're most of them are a bunch of idiots anyway. You know what I mean? They're real people, and they're nice people, and they're great. So these are friends of mine. We went around... Anyway, while I was driving for Joel, uh, Sylvester Stallone literally made me a tuna salad sandwich in his kitchen. Are you kidding me? Yes. And this is back before your anymore. Oh, wait, hold on. How was it? Was it good? It was incredible. Look, uh, how, at the time when Sylvester Stallone says, he's like, hey, you want tuna fish sandwich? Okay, yeah. you say yes. <laughs> Even if you don't like relish, if he turns to you and he's like, relish? You're like, yes, I'll take some relish. I mean, you don't say yeah, no yeah. to Stallone. But it was delicious. So, but, 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 you're but, not yeah. going to be like, uh, you know, slime, and this is good. It's a little dry, but, like, it's all right. <laughs> exactly. Hey, do you have any uh, challah? Do you have any uh, rye yeah. bread? <laughs> Your corpse in the desert <laughs> after I leave it there. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, yesterday we had a similar experience because uh, we were all in uh, Henry Winkler's kitchen, and he, he basically made us, but not, you know, the day before, yeah. made us some homemade uh, pound orange cake. pound cake. It was awesome. It was awesome. And it's like when, when the fawn says, eh, you're going to have the... the well, you do a great... Do, do oh, Henry my God. Do Henry Wink, Henry's like, you know, uh, do I do tricks? I do some tricks. Yes, <laughs> I do some loving tricks. I love... No, it's... it's I, I can't even do it right now, but Henry is the most loving guy ever. We miss you, Justin. Let's just put it that way. Oh, my God. Oh, you my look. God. I'll tell you what. Uh, of course, best known for Barry Zuckercorn. His, uh, his betrayal on Arrested Development. Well, Henry uh, yeah, uh, uh, Arrested Development, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, so, it, so we yeah, he's crazy. Place, and then we went to, uh, 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 we, we barged in on a meeting with J.J. Abrams. Yeah, J.J. being my best friend, I was like, J.J., we're coming over. We're doing some magic for you. By the way, all of these people, Brian blew them away. Oh, they loved, no, you did. That's they, very kind of you. They said. loved it, and it was appropriate and not too crazy. It, it was just great. J.J. was having a meeting. He was kind of let, let us come in and, uh, and do some magic for him. Andy Dick, we went to Andy Dick's house. Can I tell you the most amazing thing about going to Andy Dick's house was he was cleaning house, right? And so like literally there, you know, he was shuffling stuff around and walking by this wire bin and you look down and he's just like, oh yeah, and we got these, the, uh, I'm trying, you know, trying to figure out what to do with all these old news radio scripts. And I'm yeah. looking down and there's a pile of, of news, the original news radio scripts. And he says, well, I don't know what to do with them. Some of them have original notes from Phil. And I realized he's talking about Phil Hartman. Yeah, that was doodles. Unreal. Some of them have doodles from when they had their table read. He would just sit there. Oh my and God. And yeah, and and they, they were out in the and it rained today, so those things are all ruined. Oh so if you want, <laughs> there to we read, go. There we go. I'll tell you what. I really like where you guys are going, though. This is like the final nexus between magic and home invasion that our culture has has wanted for for low so many years. Speaking of home invasion, Andy had a story for us, which. You can find oh, yeah, which on, you can TMZ. Find on TMZ. You yeah. can listen to the 911 tapes about home invasion. But he was well, really we and uh, we went uh, uh, today. We 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 went and, and saw Brian Cranston. Yes, from from Breaking Bad. And what's funny is I am a tremendous fan of Breaking Bad. I watched a couple of ep episodes of Malcolm in the Middle, but I am so. And if you've never seen Breaking Bad, you've got to watch it. He is absolutely amazing. His range is incredible. You feel this character that he's created, but it's a sad character. Uh, and so as a result. I totally forgot. He is freaking hilarious. He's really, He's really so funny. off the cuff and so funny and runs in all these random directions. Justin has a really big now, head. Now, yeah, he does. No, no, no. I mean, that's, he does. The, ever since, that happened when you invited him to the Kings game. That's, that's, yeah, that's exactly true. what happened. My God, Rabbi Justin. <laughs> Rabbi exactly. Justin. Hello, my son. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what, Brian Cranston is, uh, I would say Malcolm in the Middle is, one of those comedies that just like totally slips under the radar. For some reason, it was on for a million episodes, and nobody talks about it in terms of one of the most consistent comedies in like the recent, in the modern era. But that show is pound for pound, maybe one of the funniest shows on television. It's so funny. It's exactly right. What he just said. It, it's consistent. That show was so consistently funny. And it, Brian was subtle and funny. Not this Brian. No, no, I was Brian's yeah, subtle. No, he's a goddamn buffoon. Oh, like he, he hammers you with a comedy right in the face. Cranston, he's an artist. He's like Michelangelo. Oh,
Yeah, exactly. Uh, and by the way, uh, Malcolm in the Middle was consistent in in that it was also unconventional. Like they would deliberately set up the obvious joke and then work around it. Like yeah. there was something where somebody was out of control going down a hill, and then it cut to a guy doing leaves into a giant pile, and then in the background you watch the body slam into the tree and yeah. then just move on. Yeah. It was so oh. so it's such a good show. So smart. And then we also saw Jamie Denton, James Denton from Desperate Housewives. I did the nail in the eye for James Denton, and I thought. He was just being polite and 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 you know, no, like, hey, I want to help out Bernie and, and you know and react big for his his weird friend. No. Uh, but but then like later when we screened your DVD, I mean, he was serious. He was like, Brian, are you gonna do that thing you showed me? And uh, like he requested yeah. the nail in the eye as as an encore. Well, our, our our band has a uh, a bandfromtv.org. If you want to check out the band, who's in the band or whatever, band from TV, B A N D from TV.org. I, I plug that like crazy because it's all for charity. It's a great thing. But well, we have a, our own space, our own private sort of man cave rehearsal space um, that Sears donated all the appliances for the bar and Home Goods gave us all the furniture and Lowe's gave us all the construction material. They donated all this stuff because they love what we do. Get, we've given away over $2 million over the last three years, and it's really a passion project you, for us. You should real quick uh, explain, because uh, I don't think we got a chance to talk about Band from TV last time you were on, but basically you guys do, what, like maybe four shows per year? Yeah, four to six shows per year, and each show we do for at least, a, you know, 100000 between hundred and two hundred fifty thousand dollars and $250,000. Right. And then we have a DVD on Amazon.com called Hog and All the Covers, a CD, DVD, but all the proceeds go to these various charities we support, mine being the Epilepsy Foundation of America, and I support my website, talkaboutit.org. Uh, our oldest son, Jake, has epilepsy, so I started this band to do something and to raise money. Meanwhile, we it's, it, it's, we have the coolest space. It's completely hidden. It's in Hollywood. No one knows where Nobody it is. Nobody can find it. Even I mean, when you're standing in front of it. It's seriously some James Bond stuff. Yeah. Like, like Because he takes me in the back way to the place, and he's pointing and everything, and I was like, well, what's all this? And he's like, oh, well, that's the, uh, that's the disguise. I'm like... But what disguise? What? And then you go to the outside and you're like, there is no way. Exactly. And he's like, yeah, and nobody can hear us because we have this and this and this. And it was just like, this is this it is was amazing. Very, by the way, it was very brushwood. I have to <laughs> say, it's like for you, you were like, what? It was like the opening. What was he saying? Oh, it, I it was, was laughing. Like a, I was laughing at the situation. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. I was just gonna say it was like it's like the opening to uh, get Don Adams. Yeah, yeah get, get smart. smart. It was like. Bum, ba -na, ba -na, ba -na. It's awesome. What's funny is instead of like a government installation, it's like this awesome bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. You got to go to the secretest place for it. Exactly. But you guys, so last night you guys just premiered, like not even premiered. You screened. The, the DVD that somebody cut together of your performance in Niagara Falls. Yeah, so we played uh, the, the Niagara Falls, Falls View Casino, and we had no idea what what, what, what you know what was going to be. They said, don't worry, we'll pack the place. Meanwhile, when we get there, it holds 3,500 3, people. It's wow. packed. Beautiful place to play. We, we, we really worked on the, I mean, we had, you know, Hugh Laurie, James Denton, uh, Bob Guinea, Scott Grimes from ER, me, uh, Adrian Pazdar. We, we really, we have 18 people on, on, the, on the stage, incredible musicians. Yeah. We were there last night, and it's the first time that anyone, that a casino or anyone has said, look, we really have the professional uh, uh, equipment and the, the people to really record this properly. Trust us, we have our crew and we're gonna, we're gonna film it. Even if you film a concert live, you have to do it six times to of get course. what we saw last night. Yes. They did such a great job. The lighting was incredible. This place was amazing. And the DVD, we hope, uh, that we're gonna get the rights so we can release it as our next DVD. Well, here, here's the thing. It's like That's you awesome. have- That's the, fantastic. The, yeah, well, you have shows where you nail it, where you feel like you were on fire. You have shows that are well attended. You have shows that with, where the stage looks nice, and then you have shows where you happen to record them. But to get all of them on the exact same show, and here's yeah. the other thing, too. I'm not going to lie. When, when, when you said, hey, Brian, come on out, you'll get to meet all these people and show them some stuff, and I was just like, hey, that's right, I'm going to bring the magic to these people. <laughs> Halfway through watching the DVD, uh, I was so intimidated because like already you guys were killing it because it's not just that you guys are actors who happen to you know have a vanity project band it's like you guys are really good and talented and i'm and first of all magicians have this bizarre self-doubt where we don't actually have talent all we do is take credit for stuff we didn't actually do right so i'm sitting there watching it i'm like these guys are so talented and so good and right when i'm at my depth of self-confidence that's when you come over and say hey see that guy he plays with the eagles 
see that guy? Most recorded bassist in music history. <laughs> and, then, and so it's like, I felt like nothing by the time the well, thing We stacked the deck. I appreciate you saying all that. But if anybody has seen a, uh, a Schwood show, if anyone has seen Scam Schools, anyone has seen, you know, any of his live shows, you know that he's absolutely full of crap when he talks about no talent. No, no. That's no, all I'll no, say. No, no, no. All right. Uh, all right so that's, that's a background. Right, guys, 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 guys. Uh, no I think people, people are getting, getting a little restless here. We, we got to get on the fail trail. Real yes, quick, all right. It's all right. time for the fail trail. That's what, what we're doing. What is the fail today. trail? The fail trail, look, the road to success is paved with failure. And in fact, literally, one of the things that was most important to me was to realize that all the people who I respected most in the world, all the people who had achieved the pinnacle of awesomeness have really great stories of epic, epic failure. So what we're going to do is we're going to share our own stories of failure. And in fact, we've already asked the audience to send in their tales, which I have actually not read. I'm relying entirely on Justin Robert Young for this. You actually check these out in advance. Big is that mistake, correct? sucker. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so what, what do we have on the plate for the rest of the show? All right, well, we got uh, a couple that I've hand-selected from all those that came in. By the way, thank you, everybody. Uh, please uh, remember to follow Justin R. Young or at Schwood on Twitter so you guys can be a part of bits like this in the future. Uh, also, greggrumberg.com. Well, I don't know how many times he's going to put out, you know, the missives on, on uh, NSFW bits, but anytime he does, we will be greatly appreciative of it. Uh, but, yeah, so, uh, Brian, I I we can either start with ours, one of ours, or we can go to the well, whatever you want to do. All right, do. so, look, all right, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay it out on the line. I'm going to tell you my own personal story here, <clears throat> and this is no lie. Uh, and, and this is, uh, if, if nothing else on NSFW, we try to be honest when we're not full of BS. And this is one of those moments. Literally, I have a recurring nightmare. And it's because, as a magician, you got lots of stuff for your show. You know, you got to have... You know, I gotta have my nails over here. I gotta have the brick over here. I gotta have one of these set up over here. And uh, and if the stuff isn't there, you could get halfway through uh, setting up the trick, and then it's like you can't do the trick, right? Mm. Or if the secret stuff is even more important. And then for me, there's 43 sound and video cues throughout the entire show, and if they're not exactly right, then I can't do the show. So as a result, no lie, to this very day, my recurring nightmare is that I show up at a show and I'm always running late. And I'm and I'm and I walk out to set up the show, and the audience is already there, ready to watch a show. Oh, and you're just putting out your stuff, right? And so I'm like, oh, hang on, guys. And I start to set up the stuff, and it gets and for whatever reason, I get bogged down enough that uh, that I start to just be like, well, forget it. I got to start the show. They're too restless. Like literally, people start to to, to get up and 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 rah, 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 rah. so I decide to start the show, and I'm always okay through the fire eating, and then I'm okay through the nail in the, in the nose, and then I'm okay through the brick on the head, and then I'm like, oh, I need this thing, and then I go to set up that thing, and then I realize something else isn't set up, and then all of a sudden, I'm there in the middle of the stage, and I'm setting up the show in front of a packed audience, and slowly they all get up to leave, and literally, uh, I you know, then I wake up, and I'm just like, ugh. This has been my nightmare for 10 years. But it's never happened. Oh, it happened. <laughs> wow. Come on, okay. spill the deeds, spill the deeds, Bri, Bri, let's there was, go. There was a show, <laughs> there was a show, and wow. we showed up with plenty of time. This is, this is last year is the killer thing about it, right? And there's, there's different, you know, you never know what you're gonna get. Every show's different, right? In this particular case, it was an outdoor show, which is challenging because you got wind and the fire blows weird and nobody can see the fire. And if it's during the day, you know, it's weird. And uh, there were problems with the setup. We thought we did a good job of setting everything up. And literally I go to start the show. And, uh, <laughs> and so the first thing that happens is the moment the st show starts, both of my banners blow over in the wind, oh knocking God. over my props. This is after I've started the human crazy straw, so there's nothing I could do to stop, right? And then I get through the rest of it, and then I, I do the human crazy straw, and, and the stuff goes goes pulling off stage, and then I go to start the music. You work, we're not even four minutes into the show, and somebody has accidentally unplugged my music thing, because I got this remote control <laughs> oh, system, gets right? better. And so it just keeps, it becomes this comedy of errors, and so I'm doing my best to keep it going, and then I look out, and I recognize a face in the crowd. It's it's a fellow performer who has come out to check out my show because he heard I was in town. And so, so you know, I'm someone who's going to repeat this story of how you did over, uh, and over, and over, over and over and over to everybody who you're going to talk to constantly. Here's the important thing, right? Literally. Now, now how, you've had that experience where you are in a dream and you think, well, I must be dreaming, right? Yeah. And then you yeah, go, well, yeah. I must be dreaming. That would be crazy. And then you wake up and you're like, oh, it was a dream, right? Literally. I have that moment. I'm like, oh, well, it's no big deal. I'm having that dream. 
And as I'm going through the script, continuing to do the show, I'm like, this dream is going on for a very long time. It is the only time in my entire life that while I was fully awake, I was convinced the entire time that I was actually dreaming. Out of body experience. And it wasn't until the show over, I was like, oh, I guess that show really did happen. Wow. Yeah. Have well, you well, Brian, Brian, I have, I have to say that that officially qualifies. And you, Brian Brushwood, you got <laughs> Oh there we go. Yeah. It's official. Right, You're on the field trail, trail, baby. And that was less than a calendar year away. So it's like no matter how big and important you think you are, you can you can get fail as well. I've got fail. Which, by the way, play that again because that totally sounds like a uh, a morning radio zoo sound effect. <laughs> I know. Yeah, here is, it that, is. is that intentional? Well, actually, no, no, no. We'll, we'll save. We'll save because we're gonna have plenty of fail. There'll be plenty right, of fail. Your, what's your epic fail? What's your fail? All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to bring everybody back about a year ago. I see, I'm glad that we're doing these, uh, you know, not long ago. It's not like, oh, when I was eight, I fell down and I broke my sister's toy and I cried for a year. It's like like literally months ago. I that was, was mine, Justin. That was mine. Thanks. Oh, Thanks, buddy. Sorry. You just, you just stole my story. I, spoiled, I, I spilled the beans on Grunny. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I was in L.A. and I was working on G4 Underground, uh, which uh, I was on BB Live show that I was doing that while, while I was doing the, the G4 thing. So uh, I was staying at my friend Katie's house, who many m now know uh, as a character on the show by the name of Delicious. Uh, I was staying in her place while she was shooting ice road truckers in Alaska, but she was nice enough to not only let me stay rent-free at her apartment, but also to let me borrow her car while I was commuting to the office where we were shooting G4. So uh, I'm hanging out and I'm, I'm just, you know, kind of killing time because I don't really know anybody in LA uh, during the time that I was there. So uh, one Saturday afternoon, I was, I was watching a hockey game on my laptop, and I decided I really, really, really wanted fried rice. I had this absolute craving for fried rice. So I, I beeline <laughs> out of the complex, and I go and I pick up the fried rice, and I'm coming back, and it, it's really kind of hard to describe exactly how things went, but it, it basically involved me making a very sharp uh, right turn into a, a garage with a closing gate. So the gate opens, and then has like X amount of time before it starts closing and would like scrape the car. So ironically, as a way to not have the car get scraped, I kind of pull a sharper turn into this uh, into this garage. Wait, only I, to just I hear for a second. This is this is this is while you're driving Katie's car, right? Like driving you know Katie's car, which she was nice enough to lend me because she's my friend, and uh, <laughs> I I just all of a sudden hear, and oh. it's like you know. You know it's bad when it doesn't even sound like a car. It sounds like crushing tinfoil or something. Oh, my it God. Just, it, it's a sickening sound of, like, and then it happens. And at that point, it is nothing but 100% self-delusion. That's all that pours into your mind. It is just like, well, that wasn't that bad. But she's probably just a scratch. I could just probably, probably rub it off, right? No, that's fine. So I take a look at it, and... It is horrific. It, it's horrible. You, you don't have uh, a picture, do you? And and, and you barely know I Katie, Katie know. at this point, right? Like you, you had just met her recently. No, no, we, we had been friends for a little while, but I, not like you know, uh, you know, really super, super close friends. We'd we'd worked on a project together, and then uh, you know, it, it wasn't like we were like best friends, you know, swapping stories in the middle of the night kind of thing. So. It was definitely really, really, right, really. And so, yeah. and so obviously, the first thing you did, rather than hide your mistake, the first thing you yes. did was let her know that uh, that there was trouble, uh, right? Absolutely not, Brian. What I did, like a total <laughs> coward, was try to fix it by myself so nobody would notice. Like, really, oh, it would have been the same thing as if, you know, I was you were literally trying to hide an elephant with, like, silk. You know, I was just me buying every dent king that you could in the Los Angeles Culver City area, trying to pull this thing out and buff it and get paint matcher. To, yeah, but at uh, least, at least matcher. Like once, once she knew about the problem, she immediately got to see the results and was just like, well, now this is over with. Now I understand this is what happened. And then it was over, right? Funny enough, no, Brian. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I tried to get it fixed, like, the day before I left, and the dude was like, yeah, it's a... Uh, I'd have to take off the quarter panel, and uh, it would be like twelve hundred dollars. So she so didn't find like, out until. What was the difference in time between when you ruined her car and when she actually saw the damage? Ah, uh, you know, it's 
you know, in terms of life, you know, like it was really I, I, like I that. that you know? In weeks, days, well, we'll say days. How many days since crunch Brian, to Brian? Oh, it was goodness. really like a scant, scant ninety days. It was like <laughs> a big, uh, ninety days. It was uh, really just so quick, you know. Uh, civilization in terms of the earth is is basically an eyelash so this is, this is like the moment this is how i picture it going down is like on day one it's like and then ring ring hey katie a uh, bit of a scratch on your car uh just so you know and then katie's <laughs> like all right three months later the worst the worst part about it was that like i i told her hey listen uh you know, I got a little uh, ding dip your car a little bit, but let me know uh, what it'll take to fix, and I'll I'll pay it off. And so uh, all of a sudden, I, I I hear from her like, oh, like I'm leaving Alaska. So I think she's going back to LA. So the next two days, I'm like on pins and needles, like, oh my god, she's gonna find out what I did. It's gonna be horrible. So she and the next two days go by, and I talk to her again. She's like, what's up, bro? How you doing? And we're like talking about the Steelers or something, and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> like I must have really fixed that. this car. Again, self delusion, just up to my up to my my hair, uh, and then next thing you know, I realized that she was visiting her uh, her, her then boyfriend in Florida, in Orlando, and as soon as she got back to LA, it was just like, dude, you know, <laughs> I, I can't use the words that uh, you know what she was using, but basically she was so cool about it, uh, and we wound up settling it in in a in an installment plan. And the long story short, she wound up uh, getting a new car, which was good. And as it turned out, that old okay, car wait, was wait, 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 wait. You do not get to say, well, it turned out OK, because look, because of me, she got a new car. <laughs> no, 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 I say unequivocally, for my actions. You got it. All people surely have never once failed at anything you've ever attempted in your entire life. Absolutely not. Oh, yeah, wait, real quick, if everybody success. watching or uh, reading in the chat room, the rice was awesome and the Penguins won the game. So for, for what it's worth, uh, me okay, rushing perfect. back and scraping up Katie's car, I, I did, I did, you know, a workout in the end. Go ahead. Um, sorry, Grunny. No, it, you don't get to where I am without many failures, uh, huge failures. The very, very, very beginning of my career was a failure. It's not a tremendous story, but... It's like, you know, as an actor, you're, you, or you, you know, I wasn't even an actor then. I was just trying to act, trying to get a job anywhere, anything I could. I was looking, you know, I was going out to USC, going to Did UCLA. Did you ever wear like a hot dog costume and well, this, out pamphlets? This was almost that bad. I never did extra work or anything that, which I was willing to do. Yeah, but does extra work have like a stink about it? Like, you know, oh, you don't do extra. Well, so, yeah, sometimes you know, uh, you feel like if you do extra work, they see you as an extra, and then they won't see you as a as an actor. You know, I think most of those days are gone. Look. Big, big film actors are doing TV right now. Everybody just needs to work. Yeah. So they'll yeah. do anything. But, but um, anyway, I finally got my first legitimate job, a paying gig for Computer Learning Center. It's a commercial. The very first thing, I ended up being, I turned into like the king of commercials for a couple of years. I did 60 commercials. There was one time I was watching, literally watching a huge football game <clears throat> and a commercial came on that I was the star of. The next commercial came on that I was no. in. The next commercial no. came on that I was in. I was like, what? All right, tell me this. So, do these exist on YouTube? I have a tape of all my commercials that you will. <laughs> I, I compiled them all because I thought this is awesome. I don't think they're out there. You can't find them out there. Oh, dude, tell me we can. Tell me we can. Tell well, me. if you want to search my the, the the biggest commercial I did was a Rolaids commercial where my body. <laughs> I was I was and and I was cheering and my and literally the fat on my belly. <laughs> In slow motion, was going. My boobs were shaking. It was unbelievable. It's for Rolaids. I don't know how you I will find say, it. I will say unequivocally. Oh my God! So, so, uh, I'll, I'll say this, Grumberg. No matter what, you were working, and and we actually do. Funny enough, we we've uh, compiled this audio of you responding to criticism from your friends, making fun of your acting work, and I'm gonna play it right now. Stop worrying about my acting, bitch. Which uh, you know, it's really <laughs> funny that. We can find uh, that piece of audio. The, the moment somebody in the chat room finds this commercial, uh, whoever's running the board right now at Twit, you have permission to totally interrupt the show and just start playing any commercials of Bloomberg that you have. If somebody finds a commercial that I'm in, I will send them a signed hero script. What? Okay. That's that's a bounty. Oh my God! This episode just got real, people. Yeah. We're this, on a snap yeah. hunt on NSFW. Yeah, we're throwing down. Unfortunately, everyone is now leaving to go find. <laughs> 
No, <laughs> oh, come on. We we are we are of nothing a band of multitaskers. These people, <laughs> they are on this. It's called split screen. So how many? Okay, but but the big oh, yeah, failure. Yeah, yeah. My big failure was the very first thing. I am a firm believer of the yin and yang. Okay, like if something bad goes wrong something great's about to happen. I really believe that. <laughs> like, if I'm nervous and I get somewhere, I will trip over myself. As, as I walk in the room, I will trip over myself, fall flat on, the, on my face, and that meeting will go really well. Yeah. One of my biggest meetings that I ever had uh, uh, um, with, with a producer, I went in to meet her, and I'm sitting there, and I'm in, and I'm, oh, it, um, it was Albert Brooks. I'm sitting, waiting to meet Albert Brooks, and his assistant was... was Today, uh, we're was, audiophile geeks. I, I'm sitting, I'm we're, sitting... We're home uh, theater I, geeks, right? <laughs> Wait, what am I Sorry about that? What, what, was that you, Justin? Oh, yeah, no, that was me. People are saying that they found it in the chat room, but they didn't. So I'm trying to check it out. Oh, yeah, look, yeah, oh, okay, okay. I, got, I got you. Sorry, go um, but, but, but uh, you know, I, I just am a firm believer of that. So uh, my first job in the business ever going this wrong was, was a, a good indication that I was going to have a successful career. Okay. Because if you get past this, like when people ask me, hey, I want to be an actor, what do I do? I say, quit now and get a job at IBM, get a job at Mac, do something. Do, do not become an actor. You will never make it. It will never happen ever in a million years. If they get past that, yeah, they're going to be successful. <laughs> okay? So, but, and I'm honest, and I don't. What's funny is you say that, I'm just like, wow, you're really insecure. You really don't want competition. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I say that to the Delaware's boys. Okay, Everybody okay. else, go <laughs> ahead. So, yeah, I don't need that company. But, um, but literally, it was the first thing I ever, I ever booked. Computer Learning Center, a local commercial. I was finally going to make some money. Non-union. I mean, I was making maybe forty dollars for the hey, day. Man, that's a lot of pizza. Fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm dating my wife, my beautiful wife, Elizabeth, and I go to sleep. I'm nervous, right? I go to sleep. I, I, I lay out my clothes. Everything's ready. I wake up in the morning, not to an alarm clock. And I'm like, wow, I must have, you know, I must have woke up before I was supposed oh, to wake up. No. I live uh, an hour and 15 minutes away from where we're shooting. Yeah. My call time was 7.15 in the morning. That's no. not even early. Not early. 7.15 in the morning. I woke up at 9.40. <gasps> you blew ah! off your first paying gig? Blew off my first paying gig. It was on the weekends. It was on the weekends. Not there in the office for them to call. They now, didn't have my on. number. You have a manager and an agent, and your first gig was No, 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 sorry. Months. Well, no. Okay, I'm sorry. That was it. No, my agent. Uh, an agent. Okay, so but, but like you had an agent before you even had your first paying gig ever. Yeah. So it wasn't like you were, oh, man, that's amazing. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. that doesn't happen with magic. It's not like with magic, you're like, hey, I think I know how to learn some tricks. Well, let me represent you, sir. Oh, as no, soon but, as you're ready, I'll get you a gig. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, I just had somebody kind of, you know, side-pocketing me. Setting, setting you up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I got this job on my own. I mean, I sent my resume in and got it. But I'm talking about cheap, cheap. Anyway, call them. I'm like, literally, the bags are like this. <laughs> Even though it's 920, I got a full night's sleep. Didn't matter, right? I called them. Yeah, yeah, I call them, and they're like, Greg, we have been sitting with a full crew. They lay no. track. It's a, it was one shot. No. A one shot commercial with me as a walk and talk. They had like 150 extras. They spent all their money on extras. All these people in back no. in front of this building. They could only do it on a Saturday because they were blocking off the street. And I didn't show up. They you said, totally rock started. Yeah. It's like you blew it off two hours after your call time. Literally, like, they were like, like, what's up? Yeah, yeah. I'm and, ready. And they're like, get your ass down here now. I said, I live an hour and 15 minutes no. away. Whatever it takes, we, we can't replace you. We can't. I thought somebody on the crew could do oh this. Oh, my God. Right? So it's like, it's not only are you two hours late till you bothered to call them, but then you're like, I apologize. Yeah, I'll be there in an hour and a half. <laughs> and I, so I got there an hour and a half later. Oh, my God. And I have that commercial, which I will show you. It is, it's so clear that I literally got there and I was like, computer learning center. <laughs> I mean, I was so, it was really like, it was like, the computer learning center. <laughs> is a great place for I, that's where I learned all my computer uh, skills. I was, one eye was closed, I was drunk, I mean, I was, I was fresh. I was fresh, but I was so displaced and so disjointed. Uh, so anyway. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, I don't well, know, well, Justin. Greg, I'll tell you what, uh, really, can there be anything else to say to you other than... You've got... <laughs> the failed trail that we we kicked it out to everyone in the audience to actually uh hook us up with their greatest fail stories and you had a couple of them that you picked out should i i'll, I'll try to open the account and take a look myself but meanwhile yeah yeah you... I, I actually i got it here brian uh let me ask uh the the twit people i sent uh a, a video 
that uh, hopefully we'll be able to play uh, at, at the end of this. If I can get any confirmation from Wait, Justin, Chris, Justin, yeah. I'm sorry, just one second. I'm looking at, uh, at what people are sending in. Yes, this has to be a commercial from my early career. Okay? Oh, yeah, you've done commercials recently. Yeah, I mean, I've done yeah. I've done promotions for, for Heroes, and I did a, you know, the Super Bowl, my Super Bowl spot. Do not, I, there's no way, I'm not saying, what, what is that? What is that one? That Greg Greg? Oh, no, that's it. Oh, somebody's Twitter. already twi registered Twitter.com slash Greg. 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 <laughs> that's clever. I like that. Good going, Jadalen. But anyway, uh, uh, so I, I just want to make sure that people know this has to be one of the early ones. One of the okay. early ones. That's clearly yeah, the very. Be people are sending in the 2010 Honda Inside thing, but that's going to be, it's 2010. You can't get yeah, it. No, 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 no. By the way, that, I'll just, I'll just not, state it right now. Okay, if it was, if it wasn't 40 pounds ago, I'm not sending out a script. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is All awesome. Right. So let, let me All hear right. the story, Justin. So here, here we go. Hopefully, Twit got the, uh, the video and we'll be able to play it at the end of this. But this one came in from Luke in England, all the way in jolly old London town. So yeah, that means, uh, of course, you have to read this entire thing uh, in a British accent, right? Since this was sent in by a Brit, per maybe a sure, chimney sweep sure. or a uh, somebody from 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 lower uh, the, yeah, the lower Cockney, caste. Cockney. We'll go Cockney on this one. Cockney, Cockney, old Cockney mouth is what they're going to go call for. Me. Go for yeah, it. Open your Cockney mouth and uh, and go. Done. I have a nasty epic fail. Well. It's a friend's failure. <laughs> I shall set the scene. My band had just played a set of music venue here in Mansfield, Nottinghamshire, and the place was full of fans and friends. We sat up and played an awesome everything. Went so well, but then the bassist of the band decided to get up on the stage with a BMX and asked the crowd to cheer him to jump off the stage riding the bike, which goes horribly wrong. The stage is about four feet high, and this is what happens. Now, if Twit... Please tell me that you have this queued up. Like I said in the show notes, if you guys can go to it now. <laughs> this this may now. be this may be our moment. This may be our moment of the fail trail here on NSFW because we actually did send in so show notes and we actually did send in the video that we want played right about now. 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 <laughs> oh wait, wait. Wait. No. no, no, we just we just kind of went dark for a second, teasing us. All right, no! well, here, let me. Let me... Oh, epic fail! <laughs> yeah, you want to know what? Uh, just just for that, uh, I'll give us up. <laughs> Stop worrying about my acting, bitch. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, just to finish up the uh the the, the story. It's, it's probably best to see it for yourself. Oh, that probably wasn't the best thing to read. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it's hilarious, but the quality on the video is shockingly bad, so yeah, beware. But enjoy this little snippet of pure failure and pain. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, and anyway, uh, just so you know, you can check them out at myspace.com slash dirtybeerrocks. Uh, I'm going to throw the video for itself in the chat room so folks can watch it there. Oh, there we go. Uh, but uh, you know what I could do here? I'm gonna. Uh, I, I would if Chad hadn't left the room. I would click on this and play it and hold it up in front of the screen. But instead, Chad's off um, star hunting. He apparently couldn't tolerate Greg being out of his sight, even for the duration that Greg is running to the restroom right now. So Chad had to go off and watch him like hey, some hey, kind Brian, of bizarre Brian, stalker it, all, all you're doing is talking, but all oh, I can hear. Wait, wait. We got it right here. We got it right here. Hold on. Okay. I, I gotta pause this. There we go. Here we go. I'm going to hold this up. Boy, this is super ghetto. All right. And uh, we're going to hit play here. Hit play. And we're cue for play. Do it. Do it. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, all the way across the pond exploding from a volcano in Iceland. You just got a big cloud, England, of... You got this. Oh there we go. Talk about the trail. Uh, so is this cloud, like, just going to keep pooping out the smoke for the next two years like it did last time? Is that what's going on? Dude, I'm totally pumped for it. 
I'm ready. I'm ready for a post-volcano world. I mean, is anybody not? <laughs> is anybody ready, not want to live in a volcano spewing society? You're you're not just a fan of like the movie The Road. It's like you're ready for that to become reality. You're like, I want gray skies. I no, want the crumbling of society. I want it. It's all going down. Well, especially since it's not us, it's Europe that has to deal with it. Like, it's like, sure, maybe, so it's you. like... You, this is a pro-USA stance, because it's not so much that you want no, us to... No, 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 it's no. More, it's more of a self-centered thing, because, like, you might not want to own a gigantic gun collection, right? But who doesn't at least want a friend who owns a gigantic gun collection? Right. <laughs> okay. So your point is like, you know, I, well, I'm not sure I quite follow. So you're saying hooray for our clear skies in America and, and thank yes. goodness that we're farther ahead of everyone else now wh who has an ash cloud over their con continent. That's it. I mean, there we go. <laughs> well, that makes, that makes perfect that. sense. I, of course. Why wouldn't that be the case? All right. Which yeah. of these stories is the one I should I should read? Because I have not had a chance to... Uh, uh, I don't know if you I'll know I'll tell this. you what, we got, we got one that is way relationship. We haven't had, really had a relationship fail, and this might be the most epic relationship fail I've ever read. All right, which one? Do you want me to read it? If you just point me to which one, I'll read it. Otherwise, we could just keep listening to you, and I can keep making up funny accents that you need to read it okay. in. Okay, okay. Uh, look for Mr. Neville. Mr. Okay, Neville. It. All right, there we go. This is one I'm reading cold. How shall I read it, sir? Uh, read it like it's a uh, emo live journal entry. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know what I kind of want to do? I kind of want, dude, you know what we should do is we should like have an OMG Chad makeover where we make him like super emo because this like, I don't know if you know this about OMG Chad. He's a little bit chipper, a little bit cheerful. It'd be kind of awesome to like get him, you know, looking like he wants to cut himself. All right. Oh, are you playing the music? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, here we go. Hey, NSFW show. Last summer, I'd been dating my girlfriend for at the time for four and a half years, and we decided to take a trip to Europe together. At the time, she had been teaching English in Korea for about two years, so we saw each other very little, and a month-long vacation somewhere new seemed like a great idea. But as time <laughs> came close to leaving, I saw not only the vacation, but our relationship devolving into awfulness. <laughs> she told me about a week before she would leave that she wasn't feeling like having sex. <laughs> I was me trying to inject some excitement into exactly. it. Exactly. Wasn't yeah. sure about a relationship. Inject some angst into this. I'm digging it. I'm liking start. where your character's coming from, Bri Bri. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to look. I'm trying to up my acting game. I got Greg Gunberg here. He's it, he's acting like he's eating a taco. Totally fake. That's how pro he is. <laughs> I almost didn't go, but I had paid for the tickets and most of the hotel room, so I wanted at least to see some parts of Europe. When I met her at JFK, she joked about the plane crashing. I'm not scared of this ever really happening. But you really don't want to be reminded of it, right, when you're about to enter onto an eight-hour flight to Budapest, and again to Zagreb, and again to Dubrovnik, and again to Zagreb, and again to Kiev, and again to Budapest, and again to JFK. It was pretty funny to her. I got over that pretty quickly. Oh, my God, this is like the whiniest letter ever. Uh, and soon we were in Europe and enjoying time together, but I brought my cell phone, and her mother called and told her that her brother tried to commit suicide and that she w couldn't come home because there was nothing she could really do. It was an awful situation, and she was very distraught and worried. And at some point, you stopped being emo in this story. Uh, we, we almost went back right then, but she decided against it. We continued on. At one point, she decided to rent a car in Montenegro where we drove along mountain passes with cars that tried to run us off the road. It was the scariest driving experience I've ever encountered with huge nets of metal to catch any rocks that may fall, tunnel passages with no lights or exhaust vents, so it's extremely dark and foggy inside. And the border crossing, the car died on us, but luckily it started up after five minutes. <laughs> As we were one mile from dropping the car off, let me tell you, Somebody better die in the next three lines of this story. Yeah. Or this story becomes the epic fail. We were stuck for about two hours until the heat, until until the heat of the car finally came. Or no, in the heat until the, the car show, The show's came. about to die. Yeah, no, okay. We finally made it home the next week. She broke <laughs> up. I haven't talked to her since. Worst story ever. Ever. You do not get the epic fail. You, do, you are not, not on the all. fail trail. No. You are the fail trail. Yes. There we go. You win by default, jerk. Sorry, wino. <laughs> wino? Yeah, we didn't call it the winery trail. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do this. We're going to do one Sorry, thing. It's, uh, it's almost Napa Valley. Wait, we're good. Brian, I think somebody is claiming that they have at least a screen capture 
of a old school Grunberg commercial. Have you no. checked? No. Are you oh, yeah. on your spot? No, he's, got he's, got he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Can yeah, we, can a we... tunnel of love. This is well. Let me let me describe it first before we go to it. Um, this is uh, one of my later commercials, one of my last commercials, and this is me enjoying a burger coming out of the tunnel of love, and I'm I'm in love with the burger. So is that me? <laughs> oh, look at that. Is that you? Why don't they have? How did they get that? I don't know. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I got another right, one. I got go. another one here, Brian. You might have to lift oh, up oh, your oh, your oh. DC. There we go. There's another one, and these are both ten oh, by this. longtime NSFW listener Giggle Loop. Giggle Loop did what? Giggle Loop found these. I don't know where. God knows where. Oh my where. goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, hold on. We're no, actually. Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it uh, OMG Chad uh, is having his own epic fail at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, Greg Grunberg is the classiest gentleman I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, um, all right, here we go. This is uh, Greg Grunberg. I'm going to have to hold it up to screen. By the way, we, we have a winner. There is a script going out. Let me, let's see this it, it was Giggle Loop who found it? Giggle Loop found it, yeah. The Giggle, Giggle Loop is one of our longtime best viewers. Hey, Giggle, Loop, so goes... Giggle Loop, you rock. All right, here we go. This, this is epic success time. All right, here we go. How do I love you? Let me count the ways. Because now there's a McDonald's Big Mac for every appetite. All right, let me full screen. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna full screen it here. Actually, uh, there we go. There is a full screen thing here. So this is you went into the tunnel in love with the chick, right? No, 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 no. That's the chick, and her uh, boyfriend oh, comes out. But I'm in the tunnel. Oh. Little Mac with the Big Mac. Oh, do we have plugs? Sorry. Junior, only eighty-nine cents. Go back. Your love may be eternal, but this offer isn't. You gotta go back. Oh, do we already miss you already? Yeah. All right, hold on, hold on. This is already all kinds of craziness and epic. Fit. Here we go. All right, here we go. How do I love you? Let me count the ways. There I go. <laughs> See, it's even better. Oh! <laughs> oh my God, that is awesome! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, tell me you saw that, Justin. Tell me you were able right, to see. No, no, I saw, I saw that. Although, wait, we're getting a bit of a. Uh, we're getting a, uh, some some uh, issue here. I think Jammer B sent in the video commercial. Um, oh, it was Jammer B sent in the video. Oh, but, no, but no, it, oh no, 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 sorry, no, no, no. Jammer B uh, was sorry. Yeah, that's a twit. So yeah, no, he, uh, I'm sure that John was busy. I don't know, switching the show rather than sending the. the no, the no, no, no. All right. So I don't know who sent in the Big Mac one. Gigaloop sent in the screen grabs, but okay. she did not send in the Big Mac one. So we need the chat room to decide who wins that. All right. Well, in, in, the, in the meantime, look, you guys will suss that out in the chat room. Let me actually get the chat room back up here because it's hard for me to see, which you can't do because I've got, uh, this is very weird for me. You know what? OMG Chat will put that up here. What we wanted to do to wrap things up here is do a slow motion. Normally, we end with like a rapid fire thing where it's either. Oh, no, or no, no, no. Real, real quick, number one, Brian, we should really do the uh, audible read, right? Oh, my There's goodness, the yes. Oh, you know what's funny is we got so wrapped up in failure that we totally forgot to mention our epic success yeah, because our that. episode is our episode is represented is sponsored by none other than audible.com and if you go to audiblepodcast.com slash nsfw you will be able to download for free one audio book of your choice when you sign up and it will help the nsfw let me talk show. about audible just right, for go. a second all right audible is one of those companies that is way was at the time way ahead of their time yes the, audible hooked up and they they had already had all these great books on tape Yes, but they were the ones that really gave Ricky Gervais his shot with his podcast. No kidding. Yes, and I just remember that because I love Ricky's podcast. Yes, and the Ricky Gervais show. So when I at the beginning, and every time you click on it, it's audible.com. <laughs> oh my oh boy! Absolutely, like absolutely. A little class to Ricky Gervais, and Ricky's a friend of mine, and I and I gave him a lot of shit for it. He, but but they're a great company. They're Dude, great yeah, company. no, they really are. And what's amazing, anyone who travels on the road, and, and what's great, here's the most brilliant thing they're doing, is they recognize that the people who are most likely to dig audio entertainment are the type of people who listen to shows like NSFW, any of the online podcasts. Yeah. If you're hip to podcasts, then you already know how great it is to have somebody read you, <laughs> read you stories, especially when they have a good uh, performance. And in fact, you know what? That's going to be my, in a weird, twisted way, this is going to sound totally messed up. <clears throat> But my pick, if you want to get a free book, is uh, is the uh, the Road uh, by Cormac McCarthy, right? And uh, strangely, I'm going to pick it just because we were talking about the volcanic ash, and it's timely with the fact that all of Europe is about to devolve into chaos. Nope. Wait. 
I'm gonna. T- I might take this back. Uh, I've got two picks. One is the road, which I hated, and then the other is the zombie survival guide at World War Z, which I love. So I'm gonna say two post-apocalyptic visions, and the reason I'm doing two is because the road people, you know, it was an Oprah book pick, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and Bonnie read it. And she was just like, you know, I'm just not, I'm just not feeling it. I can't even finish it. I was like, why, why, why? And she was just like, I just feel like I've had like, you know, too much of the hardcore stuff. And this is too easy for me, right? So that's beginners post apocalyptia, mm-hmm. right? Where it's, you know, and then, and then if you want to go advanced, I highly recommend World War Z. It's got an all-star cast. It is abridged, which normally I'm not cool with, but uh, like Alan Alda's in it. Uh, uh, James Wood wow. is, Woods is in it. It won a Grammy. Um, by the way, to everyone watching, you clearly were looking off camera reading something when you were like, oh, wow, that's, that's great, bro. That is so great, bro. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I want to Twitter out. Yeah, just capture oh, yeah, us. Right, right. Right. Oh, yeah, and, and by the way, written by, by Max Brooks, son of yes. Mel. Uh, so insane lineage there. Yes, and, and plus, it's like, uh, it's good because, uh, first of all, he also wrote the, uh, the Zombie Survival Guide, which you can get an audiobook on, on Audible. Uh, but uh, I highly recommend World War Z. If you're into the hardcore, if you just want to get started into, like, softcore death of, of the world, then I highly recommend uh, The Road, although I didn't care for it. What about you, Justin? Do you got any recommendations? Uh, I do. By the way, Brian, if you want to click in the chat room, uh, uh, Delicious has posted uh, what I did to her car uh, on, on the internet. Oh, my goodness. So, you, you, you can click and see that. Oh, good. Uh, uh, no, here, here's what I'll pick, and I'll tell you what, everybody's uh, talking about the whole big Gizmodo iPhone thing. If you want to get a look at how a big story is broken, which I will contend is uh, some of the steps that were skipped in, let's say, Gizmodo's coverage of the iPhone, uh, read the classic uh, All the President's Men. It is uh, it, it insane to read. If you know about Watergate, you've heard about it, it's a well-written book, an incredibly well-written book. And the uh, narration is fantastic. So all the president's men is what I would recommend is my audible pick. And remember, folks, you can get the gold plan, one book a month, the platinum plan, or as I like to do it, the unobtainium plan, which is a jillion books a week. <laughs> but, so, by yeah. the way, on the screen, if you could cut over to it, we're seeing uh, what we're seeing. Andy Dick shortly after I did the nail in the nose for him. He was horrified by the skewer through tongue, but then when I offered to give him my tongue, he was just like, oh, well, I need the skewer too, and he was super excited. So literally, that's my tongue in Andy Dick's mouth right there, which I didn't mean for that to sound quite the way it did. Uh, uh, <laughs> if you want to get any of our books totally free, you got to head on over to audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. Do you have a recommendation that you want to make? I would just say the, the Ricky Gervais show. That's that's what I would say. Yeah, yeah, Hell yeah. Because not only, not only is it books, folks, it's also a podcast. And, and the Ricky Gervais show, if you've never heard it, uh, literally stop watching this right now. Run. I had to run because it's on your computer, too. But stop. Click our window off and listen to Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington, and Stephen Merchant. They are maybe the funniest people in the last 25 years in terms of writing. If you've never watched a British office, kill yourself. That's all I have to say. They're podcasting. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, speaking of which, we do have uh, this update from the <laughs> from the chat room. <laughs> oh, there we go. On Twit. Twit's got it. Jammer B's already got it on there. <laughs> that uh, That's a bit of a scratch there. That's on, uh, not good. A delicious his car. That's a heck of a, that's a bang up job there, Justin. Well, well done. Way to go there. Sir. So do we have one winner? <laughs> <laughs> You've got fail. Yeah, we, we're trying to figure out if we if we're down to one winner on the on the fail script. We got to make sure that we have. I said fail script. I just called the hero Appreciate script it. the fail script. So there's that. Little slip. That's Little a, slip. <laughs> yeah, no, we do we do we do have one. We do have, we had to figure out who won that. And also one final thing before we wrap everything up is, uh, Greg. I don't know if you remember the last time that you were on the podcast with August. Uh, we were talking about Yowza, and then I pitched to you a few ideas for live read commercials. Remember yeah. that? Yes. All right. I actually well, loved them. I loved them. Except for the one okay. that you hung up on us after you heard it and told right. us you hated it. Right, right. But right, outside exactly. of that one, the rest were great. Yeah. Yes, he Here loved we go. it. Well, uh, I, I just wanted to, to let you know that uh, yeah, I knew you were coming back on, so what I wanted to do was write a, a couple more. And Yao's, I feel like we already had covered, but you guys are out there. You are currently uh, working, doing stuff for the... Uh, uh, the Talk About It charity. So I, I wanted to take it upon myself to write you a few commercials for the Talk About It charity that I'd like to for, pitch for, to wait, wait, for, for right talkaboutit.org. Talkaboutit.org, talk of course. Talkaboutit.org. Talk about about it. It. 
Which, by the way, uh, uh, no no lack of star-studded cast. I want no. to talk about it, Don. No, Lee. no, we fool you. We get you to the website. You think you're going to see some some you know of, our, of your favorite stars. You see all of your favorite stars, and they're all talking about epilepsy. It's the greatest thing. Yeah, I've ever seen. Well, and that's amazing. Is you just keep watching. You're like, shut up, them too. And them, what? And them? Yeah, yeah it's no, it's right. very impressive. All right, let's hear it. first pitch. All right, now, Justin, listen, listen. Yeah, yeah. Last time between you and me. I'm yeah, pretty sure you hated yeah. everything you did. This is your Absolutely. chance. This is your chance to actually make it right, all right? I don't want you to mess around. You got to knock it out of the park. I would say last chance. I would say last chance. Wow, that's... We're, that's we're, 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 I know. Okay. Listen, Brian, I'm behind on the count. I know I, I got I to make this one count, so here we go. Uh, uh, Greg, this yeah. one is called uh, Carlisle Wentzpenny, okay? Carlisle Wentzpenny? Carlisle Wentzpenny. Okay? Well, Wentzpenny. Wentzpenny, got it, got it. And, he, and, and it goes a little something like this. My name is Carlisle Wentzpenny, hedge fund manager. My breakfast, I eat a fried egg sandwich cooked in two minutes, flat. My commute to suburban New Jersey, I'm shot out of a cannon, military grade, and shatter the 17th story window facing the Hudson River in four minutes, flat. My morning <laughs> massage by an Irish immigrant who serves as my overbearing mother replacement, seven minutes, flat. My makeout session with mother, two minutes, Flat. My call to Goldman Sachs, one minute. Flat. My trades with that moron Goldberg at Morgan Stanley, one minute. Flat. My calls to trade sack for man golden on Fantasy Baseball League with Stanley Morgan, five minutes. Flat. But I live my life as quick as possible, so when it comes to something that matters, like clearing the air on epilepsy, I can talk about it as long as I want. I had yeah. to talk about it. And make sure that my voice is heard. Had to talk about it.org. It takes approximately 17 seconds. Flat. Hey! hey! Well done. Well done. I right. love it. So that's hates... called redemption. That is called redemption. <laughs> you're back on the board. All right, now, Justin, Justin, you're back yeah. on the board. All right, let's not screw this up. No missteps on the second one. You got to keep the hits rolling. Go. Here we go. All right, uh, Greg, we have one more for you. You seem to really like uh, the uh, cheapest man in the world, Reed. Last yeah. podcast. Awesome. The cheapest man in the world. Right, right. Love it. What, what, what you might not have known is that he has a cousin, the least talkative man in the world. <laughs> oh, I did not know that. That I did not well, know. Now, now you know, and it, he goes a little something like this. I'm the least talkative man in the world. When somebody asks how my day is going, I nod gently, quietly wishing for a gilded eagle to swoop in and snatch the nosy Nelly off the pavement. If the choice is to speak now or forever hold my peace, I'll hold my peace until my kidneys hurt. For me, my Miranda rights are a lifestyle. But when it comes to something serious like epilepsy, you can't shut me up. Because I know the only way to clear the air on any misconceptions or untruths is to talk about it. I had to talkaboutit.org and talk all GD day and night. I talk to anyone and everyone, even animals. I'm a regular Dr. Doolittle. I can translate snake to gila monster. <laughs> Take it from me. Had to talkaboutit.org and talk about it. I talk until I cry and the tears are my words. I speak out of my eyeballs. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, well done, okay. sir. Well done. The standing ovation. Oh, redemption. For Let me Justin tell you something. Robert. Not only redemption, but if we have that clip, which I think we do, uh, I would <laughs> like to put that on talkaboutit.org. So oh my God, that would be I, awesome. I would be, I would be, I would be absolutely honored. Uh, in all, in all seriousness, talkaboutit.org and in, in uh, looking through the site, it's fantastic. Everybody should head there right now. Uh, it is not only a fantastic cause, but you guys are doing a great job getting the word out. Thank you, and I, I, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to write that. That really means a lot. I really mean it. I mean, that's just fantastic, and we're going to have some controversial stuff on talkaboutit.org to mix it up. Uh, we're working on a video of what it looks like to the person that is actually having the seizure, oh the my point, of, point of view of somebody having a seizure, and also what, what to do, what not to do, some funny stuff like the absolute absurdity of sticking something in someone's mouth when they're having a seizure. So go to talkaboutit.org, check out what's there now, know that there's new material coming, including Justin. The, the least talkative man in the world. That was awesome, man. <laughs> awesome.
<laughs> well, there we go. There we go. I, I, anything I can do to help. But uh, but there we go. Now, Brian, do we want to do uh, the real quick we got time. We got rapid time. failure? We started a little bit late, so we've got time. Instead of going out with our rapid fire like we usually do, we'll do a rapid failure where you, as usual, the chat room's going to give us an either or. And if John can actually cut over to the chat room so that we can see it as we're going forward, otherwise we can watch it over here. We're going to have you guys give us two scenarios, very brief. We don't have a lot of time to read a lot of words, but you're going to give us blank or blank and we're going to tell you which is the biggest failure. And if we can, uh, we can go ahead and start that. In fact, we'll... I'll give you an example. Let me just right. give you an example so everybody knows what we're doing, okay? Chad getting off the plane at, at an airport where he shouldn't oh, have... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, my God, no, no. Or, or, have... or Chad spilling soda on my pool table <laughs> in my house. Which one of wow. those? Wow. Which is more of an epic failure? Uh, I'm going to go with ruining the pool table from an actor on uh, national television. No, no. Network take, 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 take his life. Take his life. I am so glad you just brought that up. I forgot all about that. Yeah, that's uh, okay. All right, Chad. That's okay. you, you've got three minutes to tell both your stories. The chat room is, we're going to decide which is the biggest oh failure. Fast, fast, fast. First of all, heading out here, we left from Minneapolis State Paul Airport and, uh, and from my perspective, uh, Chad just randomly goes, <laughs> Chad, uh, we landed in Sacramento, and I was asleep the whole flight. We landed in Sacramento. <laughs> and, uh, and Chad goes, hey, Brian, uh, you ever, you know, I don't know, you ever get off in the wrong city? I mean, it's kind of confusing because you land, and then, you know, do you get off, do you not get off? And I was like, no, you, you get off on, on the right city, and you know what city you need to go through. He's like, Really? I mean, you don't ever. I mean, it just seems like when you fly a lot, you would accidentally, at some point, get off on the wrong, on the wrong okay. city. Okay. Yeah. So, so here's the deal. Normally, I sit right next to Brian on the flight, so that whenever we get up, I leave. And so, you normally, I don't think about these things. Uh, on this flight, I saw this awesome seat next to the emergency exit row where I had plenty of leg room, so I took it. Uh, we uh, leave from Austin. We arrive in a place. I didn't know where we were. Uh, everyone gets off the plane. I get off the plane as well. And I pull out my ticket, and it says right there on the ticket, your next flight will be at gate A17. And I think that's just great. So I walk, and uh, we were in where we were in De Colorado. Yeah, yeah you were, we're in Denver. In, I was on the plane. Yeah, so you. I was in Denver, Colorado. I uh, uh, took the train all the way yes. to the other area. Yeah. You get to you get to A. I, and I get like, to A, and I'm this going. Weird. I'm going. Where is A17? There doesn't seem to be an A17. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm looking around, and everything is Frontier Airlines, which we always <laughs> fly Southwest. <laughs> and, uh, and so I go, huh, this is weird. I walk over to the information booth, and I say, Hey, uh, I'm having trouble with my finding my gate. And he goes, Huh? Well, this says you're going from Sacramento. To uh, California, so to, 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 Sacramento's to, in California. To, Sacramento, oh, yeah, yeah. To, to, to Burbank. To Burbank, yeah. right? And uh, I was like, "Huh, okay, uh, what does this mean?" And he goes, "Well, you probably should have stayed on your flight." And I went, <laughs> oh. <laughs> "It means no, you're uh, it means I'm on, in wait, the wait, wrong wait. city." And so, uh, I Chad, have... Chad, can I just tell you right now how much money you left on the table in that situation? There is no other way that you can convince somebody you are either a ghost or a time traveler than the way that you did it right there. Like, you, like, oh, like, oh wait, your ticket no. says you're supposed to be somewhere else. It's like, oh, well, I can't believe I just left from Sacramento. This is 1987, right? Right. <laughs> OK. All right. So, so the realization sets no, in. No, no, nobody cares. So what? You oh make it back on God. the plane. Yeah. Right. Yeah, close story. That, oh, we're geez. more interested in your failure than your redemption. Yeah, so, okay. okay. So now to your other failure, which ironically happened maybe 20 uh, minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> what so you guys could not see off camera is we're, is we're sitting, we're in Craig's house. He's nice enough to let us use his equipment, his house, his everything. And, and this laptop that we're watching right now is sitting on his pool table, right? Here we go. That's the pool table uh, oh, over here. No. And then right there is the evidence of what just happened. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, I have to grab the laptop to bring it over so that we can show stuff full screen. I reach around and I smack uh, the uh, soda that I had, and it just spills all over Greg Grunberg's pool table. <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm freaking out. I, th I like, thrust the camera into Brian's arms, and I start running. And I get uh, I get paper towels and I'm just and and meanwhile the show is going on and Brian like hints he goes well that's not as bad as the fail that Chad just did <laughs> yeah thank you that's oh. uh, that's very that, no no wait like, real quick can I make a ruling on this one Brian because I want to go ahead and take take an executive decision on no, on good. these these two can I go ahead and do that uh, number one as kooky as an adventure 
as your plane thing was. And believe you me, it was plenty retarded. Uh, there, is, there, is the, there, is the, there is the distinct possibility that one day in the not too distant future, Greg Grumberg and his best pal in the whole wide world, J.J. Abrams, will be shooting a little pool when J.J. will come over to maybe pick a ball out of the pocket so they can re-rack it and say, hey, uh, how did that stain get on your pool table? And then, in a tone of nothing but pure disgust, Greg Grunberg will speak your name, and although he will probably say Brian's assistant, what he really will mean is OMG, Chad, and for that, you, my friend, you got this. <laughs> 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 All right, real quick, let's take it out with rapid fail. Let's show us, uh, I tell you what, I don't know if you have the music for the, the NSFW theme, but we're going to play. Give us uh, two scenarios. We'll tell you which is the biggest fail in each of our opinions. So far, we are seeing Kuhan or Chad. I would say today, Chad is the bigger fail. I would agree. <laughs> Season two or season three, that's got to be lost they're talking about. Uh, season three is the one that started off so rocky, right? Where well, they just started always doing it. season three. It, it, no, yeah, season three. yeah no, two, two was pretty loose, too. Both of them were pretty, were pretty but uh, three was probably most maligned. If you were talking about heroes, I would go two. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a writer's strike you guys had. The writer's well, strike, That yeah, was right? a half season. That half wasn't season. even fair, that's yeah. Uh, Rollades or Big Macs? I'm going to say we got to see Big Macs, so I'm going to say Rollades is probably I'm the better. I'm going to say Rollades because that's the big commercial that I did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Brian's mouth on Andy Dick or what? Uh, let's skip that. <laughs> um, <laughs> NSFW or Scam School? Uh, oh, oh, dude, oh. NSFW is the bigger uh, fan. This one, this uh, one gets that uh, every Olivia day of the Mom, week. Olivia Munn or uh, Veronica Belmont? Uh, you know, I'm just uh, talking uh, about Olivia Munn stuff. And Veronica Belmont, she's stirring up, uh, I don't want to do anything across her. Because did you, I don't know if you saw their Twitter battle with uh, John C. Dvorak. Did you see that business girl? No, 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 I didn't. But I'll tell you what. Uh, no matter how it breaks down, I'm on. I'm on V's team. Uh, you know, I think she could take that anybody. So I would say Mun is the failure in that comparison. That's right. Okay, put that down. One, one, two, three, five, eight, or four, four, eight, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-three, forty-two. I'm gonna say the second one. That's pretty great. <laughs> I love that. Um, uh, Hitler's dice. Hitler. Hitler's dice are still around. Absolutely. Hitler's not around. Family Guy or American Dad? Uh, oh, American Dad, is that still around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. way, yeah. way bigger failure, American Twilight Dad. Twilight or really not uh, by nothing much. beats out Twilight for fail. I you absolutely agree. Are you kidding me? Are you do you know anyone who worked on Twilight? No, but okay. I gotta say, like, it's Twilight is a Saturday Night Live sketch of itself. Oh, that's so funny. It's, I haven't watched any of it. So oh, I just I love the books, but the the movies, yes. You know, you had me up until I love the books though. <laughs> Those are great. Yeah, yeah. Was that a screen capture? I was seeing something from the Twitter. No, guy? that's actually a clip of, uh, of of Greg on a show with. Uh, hold on, let me see. Cause somebody sent it to me. The Medicine Show. That's, that you? Uh, that's uh, no, that's John. That's me. Ready? Oh, yeah. Here I come. Here I come. Here. No, that, not that's not me. That's Wait, not me. Wait, is that the guy from freaking uh, Battlestar Galactica? No. Oh, no. Johnny Silverman, I'm a single guy from. No, no, on the left. But I'm talking no, about the yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know my that's, that's Chief, right? No, no, no. Wow. That's not me. That's the, that was Johnny Silverman. Here I come. Here I come. Ready? There he is. This was a movie. This is a movie called the Medicine Show, and uh, I star John. Is, John Silverman has cancer. And it's time to clean up for all the ambassadors of the network. All right, all right, hey, Twit, let's uh, let's make action about with the, using this. Well, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, wait, okay. Uh, let's do let's do one more. Um, King Leo or Danger Dane? I am. Uh, I mean. I'm too scared of Danger Dane to say anything else. So it's I don't know what Danger Dane. either one of those things mean. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> Lost or Heroes? I, I, either way, I have to say... Stop worrying about my acting, bitch. Uh, <laughs> All right, look. I say we're going to wrap things up in the after show. We'll figure out exactly who deserves that hero <laughs> script, who got it out first. But that is it for me. I'm Brian Brushwood at Schwood on Twitter. Don't forget to follow Greg Grunberg. What's up? At G-R-E-G-G-R-U-N-B-E-R-G -G -G -E -E on Twitter. Absolutely. Download Yowza now to save money. Uh, go to banfromtv.org and finally talkaboutit.org. Talk about it over dinner. 
Talk about epilepsy for five seconds. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, and by the way, uh, real quick, like literally, I found myself in a conversation where I felt a little bit weird about talking about epilepsy with someone, and I was just like, the, I, I felt what you, what the whole thing's about. I'm like, it is kind of weird to talk yeah. about it. Stigma Especially, sucks, baby. Yeah, Stigma absolutely. Sucks. What about you, Justin? What, what do people need to check out? Uh, all right, folks, here is the skinny on uh, on a life, okay? I'm heading out to L.A. tomorrow so we can get ready for the Magic Castle week. It is Andrew Main. It is Brian Brushwood. It is hosted by Rudy Kobe. For Magic people, you will know the names of Chris Kenner, Bizarro, Dan Sperry. Everybody who is cool is going to be there. It starts this weekend and runs until May 2nd, or maybe it starts Monday. I don't know. Uh, I think April 26th through May 2nd. Go to uh, uh, itrix.com or rudycoby.net. Uh, we will have it is uh, broman at magiccastle.com is where yes, you email we want to stack get information on tickets. We want to stack the deck with NSFW fans. If you've ever wanted to go to the Magic Castle, reach out to, to, to Justin and broman at, at uh, magiccastle.com. Is that what it was, Justin? Yes, yes, that is that is what it is. Head to idrix.com, search for Rudy Kobe. You can see the picture of, of, of Magic vs. Science is Rudy Kobe versus, as the scientist, versus Marilyn Manson as the evil magician. It is awesome. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, please, everybody, everybody check it out. Uh, I also, Justin R. Young on Twitter. And please, frequentweirdthings.com. Now more than ever, I am back blogging every single day. It is Justin Robert Young plus Matt Finley, all the weird stuff content you could ever want in your life. Hit it up, folks. Justin, I'm gonna do the. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up for this episode, and, and for the first time ever, I'm gonna I'm gonna big time you. Uh, we actually have an appointment. I have to run the, uh, the the show. Is yours. We will see you next Tuesday. Love you. Did you do the loser thing? <laughs> That's all you got. <laughs>